हेलो डियर लर्नर्स आई एम मेघा उपलाने प्रोफेसर इन एजुकेशन सावित्रीबाई फुले पुणे यूनिवर्सिटी पुणे टुडेज टॉपिक फॉर डिस्कशन इज करिक्युलम डेवलपमेंट एंड टीचर्स रोल फ्रेंड्स करिक्युलम इज की एस्पेक्ट ऑफ द प्रोसेस ऑफ एजुकेशन इट इज अ हार्ट ऑफ एजुकेशन प्रोसेस इट टेल्स टीचर्स वॉट इज टू बी टॉट इन द क्लासरूम एंड how it is to be taught in the classroom all the activities involved in the process of education are controlled by curriculum today's session includes 10 points definition of curriculum components of curriculum characteristics of good curriculum determinants of curriculum curriculum framework models of curriculum development types of curriculum design teachers role in curriculum development different phases of curriculum development and teachers role let us consider one by one first of all curriculum curriculum is defined by many people and some definitions we will consider today the word curriculum has its root in latin it originally meant racing chariot and came from the verb career of which the meaning is to run in the context of education there is no one clear definition of curriculum it encompasses both the written and unwritten aspects of what an institution wants to impart or teach its students hence it includes not only the subjects or the content that has to be taught but also social skills thinking skills and behavioral skills let us consider some definitions of curriculum definition given by tanner tanner defines curriculum as the planned and guided learning experiences and intended outcomes formulated through the systematic reconstruction of knowledge and experiences under the auspices of school for the learners continuous and willful growth in personal social competence another definition given by shabert he defines curriculum as the contents of a subject concepts and tasks to be acquired plan activities the desired learning outcomes and experiences product of culture and agenda to reform the society definition given by pratt he defines curriculum as a written document that systematically describes goals plan objectives content learning activities evaluation procedures and so forth definition given by goodlad and sue they define curriculum as a plan that consists of learning opportunities for a specific time frame and place a tool that aims to bring about behavioral changes in students as a result of plan activities and includes all learning experiences by students with the guidance of the school kronbleth defines curriculum as answering three questions what knowledge skills and values are most worthwhile why are they most worthwhile and how should the young acquire them from these definitions it can be concluded that number 1 curriculum is a detailed plan for instruction set by policy makers curriculum is the combination of instructional practices learning experiences and students performance assessment 
that are designed to bring out and evaluate the target learning outcomes of a particular course. A selection of information segregated into disciplines and courses typically designed to achieve a specific educational objective. Curriculum is a framework that sets expectations for students learning. It serves as a guide or road map for learners that establishes standards for students performance and teachers accountability. Curriculum is the floor plan or blueprint for what is going to be taught, learned or experienced in the academic classroom over a period of time. Curriculum refers to an interactive system of instruction and learning with specific goals, contents, strategies, measurement and resources. The desired outcome of curriculum is successful transfer and or development of knowledge, skills and attitudes. After this discussion regarding concept of curriculum from various definitions, now we will consider second point that is components of curriculum. A curriculum has five components. First one is a framework of assumptions about learner that is learner's capacity, ability, aptitudes, potential for learning, motivation, needs, interest and values and the society that means its orientation to nurturing or using the individual gainfully. Second component of curriculum is objectives including both behavioral and content components. The objectives define the direction of educational development. They determine the number of levels for the program and inform students about the standards and expectations of the course. The objectives also help in the selection of content and desirable learning experiences. They form the major basis for evaluation and provide the framework for clinical evaluation tools. The objectives serve as an implicit contract between the instructor and the students setting up a basis for accountability. Most importantly, objectives drive curriculum planning. The objectives should be worded by utilizing verbs from various taxonomies of learning, most probably Bloom's taxonomy. Third point is content or subject matter with selection of what is to be taught and learnt, scope of the subject matter and its sequence. This component addresses the questions, what subject matter should be included, how much should be taught at different levels, what should be the order or sequence of topics. Content is another term for knowledge, compendium of facts concepts, generalizations, principles and theories. According to Jerome Brunner, knowledge is a model we construct to give meaning and structure to regularities in experience. Curriculum developers take a subject centered view of curriculum or a learner centered view of curriculum. Subject centered view of curriculum, here we consider, we focus in subject centered curriculum on the fund of human knowledge representing the repository of accumulated discoveries and inventions of people 
down the centuries due to people's exploration of the world. Learner centered view of curriculum, it relates knowledge to the individual's personal and social world and how he or she defines reality. Fourth component of curriculum is modes of transaction which deals with the process of teaching learning and it includes methodology of teaching, learning experiences both within the institution and outside, learning environment, teaching material as well as student material since learning results directly from personal experiences and resources becomes a vital concern in the classroom. Teaching strategies, methods and educational activities put into action the goals and objectives using the contents in order to produce learning outcomes. And the fifth component of curriculum is evaluation methods and techniques for students. Evaluation is the process of determining the value of something or the extent to which goals are being achieved. It is the process of making decision or reaching to a conclusion. It involves decision making about students performance based on the information obtained from an assessment process of collecting information by reviewing the products of students work, by interviewing them, observing or testing them. The ultimate purpose of any evaluation process is to improve students learning. Curriculum evaluation is the process of obtaining information for judging the worth of an educational program, product, procedures, educational objectives or the potential utility of alternative approaches designed to attain specified objectives. Curriculum evaluation focuses on determining whether the curriculum as recorded in the master plan has been carried out in the classroom. In evaluating the curriculum, questions are to be asked and they are, are the objectives being addressed, are the contents presented in the recommended sequence, are students being involved in the suggested instructional experience, are the students reacting to the contents. Therefore, curriculum evaluation is the attempt to assess or judge the worth of students and educational practices, materials or programs. It is a determinant whether a curriculum has to be continued, stopped or revised. Summative evaluation refers to the assessment which takes place at the end and formative evaluation takes place during the curriculum development. Longstreet and Shane refer to four major conceptions of curriculum. Number one, society oriented curriculum of which the purpose of education is to serve society. Second, student centered curriculum where the student is the crucial source of all curriculum. Third one is knowledge centered curriculum which tells that knowledge is the heart of curriculum and fourth one is eclectic curriculum. It tells that various compromises are possible including mindless eclectism. Bain produced five major principles of curriculum. Number one, concern with the experiences of learners. 
to making decisions about content and process number 3 making decisions about a variety of issues and topics number 4 involving many groups number 5 decision making at many levels these authors have a conception of curriculum perhaps a combination of students and society centered approaches